Welcome to the Aftermath. It's the best music discussion on the net. I'm Soren Baker. I'm Billy Johnson Jr. And today we are joined by Miss Melody. Check, check, check out my Melody. All She's right. right here. Everybody used that? to say that to me in middle school. As they should. My PE teacher. My PE teacher. Your, your put everybody. Your PE teacher said that, really? Yeah, he put everybody on it. Okay. So everybody check. would be like, check. check. Out my exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so very, very, very impressive. Shout out to the PE teacher. Loving Eric and Rakim. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing, man. <laughs> so we, we were introduced, and maybe you guys too. To Melody through the Pussycat Dolls, right, right. Yes. So uh, she definitely represented, and now post Pussycat Dolls, she's got a mixtape. Um, yes. She's got a lot of things going on, so we just wanted to catch up with yeah. her and find out what's going on. So how you doing? Is it I'm just trying to yeah. read books and keep my mind together. <laughs> no, right. no, no. I, I put a mixtape out in March, and it's doing right. really well. People, um, it's it, it really have responded to it very positively, right. and um, so yeah, yeah, lots of downloads, and all that really good stuff. Billy and I would be two of those, I would say. Absolutely. Good, so you know, on um, one of the songs you covered, uh, Jay Z and Kanye, yeah. No, No Church for the Wild, which. In terms of the the rhythm and the beat, you know that's like one of my favorite songs on yeah, the record. Mine too. Um, and so the, talk about that because you did something interesting with it, and yours is called um, lipstick and guilt. Yeah. Li wow. <laughs> well, the the thing mm -hmm. about that record was, well, when I heard uh, Watch the Throne, I was like, yo, this is like bb king-esque you know mm -hmm. to me it gave me like a very southern bluesy situation and i was raised on bb king and i was you know very much raised on the jackson five and that whole 60s vibe so that's kind of why the western 60s thing is my vibe um but i wanted something new something that people would recognize so i rewrote it kind of based on the chorus that was already there or the mm -hmm. premise that was already there mm -hmm. i just made it more of a Singer song. Yeah, <laughs> definitely so. But the uh, subject matter of that song and some of your songs, you know, you, you seem to be talking about the music business yep. and the whole experience mm -hmm. and stuff and uh it gets kind of deep so is, deep. is there something you're trying to, is there something you know what it is some I, sweet vendetta and, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. well the voice I itself is kind of that so you know when i go to sing sweet songs there is one oh. song on on <laughs> on the mixtape which is called loving you better and i got a very good response from that people love you know kind of hearing a more subtle approach but i would say my strength as a vocalist is kind of that gritty, grimy, really, you know, jam at home mm -hmm. sound. So, um, you know, it's all in good fun and it's in, it's important to inspire people anyway. Right. So I would say, you know, people have their hard times. Hey man, you know, people you have know. friends stab them in the back. People have, you know, all so those all those experiences. Stars, but, <laughs> but, but the one that got away, I think, might be my favorite. Yo, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So with that song, I wanted to get the. Because that one seemed very emotional to mm -hmm. you, vocal performance. So what what was going on with <laughs> the, the meaning behind that? I think all girls from time to time think to themselves, uh, "Why?" Well, yeah. No, I think I think all girls from time to time think to themselves like. You are gonna be so bummed. You dump me. You just watch, <laughs> and it always happens. I mean, you know, I would say guys probably go through that too, but right. I don't know. I'm a girl, so. But the one that got away, yeah. I mean, that was a um, uh, an instrumental from the 1960s, from '68 mm -hmm. actually, um, called "The Horse," and that's actually the whole instrumental. And I just wrote a song to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Considering the throwbacks, like there's another one that I heard from the Color Purple mm -hmm. soundtrack, and you did the song "Sister" a cappella, mm -hmm. which yeah. I thought was great. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Well, that movie has always been like it's from childhood to now. When I see that movie, I'm like, ah! you know, it moves you. There are people in it who are incredible actors and also vocalists. And for me, um, you know, Suge Avery singing Sister to her friend saying, you know, don't let them low lives keep you down is, you know, it's kind of my vibe. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I'm always for the underdog, so I love empowering music. Now, because you were in a group and the group broke up, you know, I mean, people are wondering, like, does this have anything to do with any of that? Like, just some of the songs that you're singing about. Are you talking about that experience at all um, in your in your songs? Um, of course, because it was a big chapter in my life. I was 19 when I got into the, you know, the Pussycat Dolls. And uh, so it, yeah, of course. But you know what? Not all of it. I think w when people see, it's, it's just like people on the street who, or maybe Middle America, or maybe people who don't, live in this city, LA, and understand that when you see Leonardo DiCaprio, his name is not Jack from <laughs> from Titanic. Yeah. His name right. is Leonardo DiCaprio. So I think a lot of times people are like, oh my God, 
there she is, Pussycat Dolls. She must think about it every day. I'm like, no, I don't. You know what I mean? I, I'm definitely moving forward, and, and, and you know, this music is, is about me. It's about my life, you know? I think I took some time, and I think all my bandmates really went through this as well. You take time, and you have to find yourself again. Because yeah. you spent so much time living in this thing and playing this part. And for me, I was the black girl with the ponytail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, it's it's it's... You know, a little bit of it is in there. Yeah, yeah. there's a little are, bit of influence. Are you there. finding people or who are like saying to you, "Wow, like I knew you could sing, but I didn't know you could sing." Yeah. You know, like after hearing the mixtape. Put that thing on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've I've gotten that, and 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 you know, that's ple It's it's helpful. Um, it's important that people know that. Um, I think a lot of people ask themselves, "Why didn't she sing in the group?" Mm -hmm. And it's it's one of those things. It's like I don't know. Who knows? There, there's no answer to that. But there's nothing wrong with me as a vocalist. I just didn't sing in the group. Yeah. So um, it's, I, I'm happy that the mixtape came out and people are getting to hear mostly my writing. Yeah. You know, because the voice is, it is what it is. You right, know. Right. And I've trained and worked on it since I'm a little girl. So it's, it is what it is. Now you talked about your father being um, a big influence in terms of like kind of music you grew mm -hmm. up listening to. Like, tell me about about him. And yeah. That sounds really interesting. My dad was, okay, well, this is a long story, but uh -huh. my dad was in law enforcement, so he's a very, you know, military type. Like, he's like, my house, my remote, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so he's like, my radio. But good thing he has good taste in music. And, and so, of course, he was the biggest influence in my life as far musically anyway um but bb king muddy waters uh johnny guitar watson like those that's what he jams in his car now still you know like he doesn't listen to anything else but you know from time to time he'll hear my stuff and be like i didn't get that this was great this will move you you know stir your soul yeah exactly he's, he's that's very some free a and r advice He's right? exactly yeah yeah no totally from from an og right yeah um, and <laughs> Uh, Sorry and I were looking at a clip of you uh, doing this show, Pop Stars to Opera Stars. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, she could sing opera. Maybe you could give us a little piece of that. But talk about that. Like, how challenging was that? You know? It's very challenging. Opera is not uh, a joke. It is the. It's really real. Um, to be an opera singer, you cannot drink. You cannot obviously smoke. I mean, you shouldn't smoke and be a singer anyway. Um, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. I know so many people who do, and I'm like, what? But to be an opera singer, you can't talk loud. You can't. You can't talk after. Let's say you know, you plan on waking up at eight o'clock in the morning. You have to stop talking at eight o'clock in the evening. Yeah. So no talking. So every every ounce of your energy, as far as your voice goes, it, it goes. To Toward you know being an opera singer, so um, I mean that's that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. judicious with your vocals. You have to be really. I mean, and that's why they eat. That's why opera singers get bigger because there's, there's nothing. <laughs> no, that, that, that's honest. There's nothing else you can do aside from enjoy the food. You know what I mean? Like if there's a comfort. You can't have a drink. So, um, but no, no, it taught me a lot and it helped me so much vocally, just in you know my regular yeah. register. But yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. It's really hard. And I think it definitely comes through on the mixtape. Thank you. Because, um, you know, just the energy and the enthusiasm and the range. You know, from being excited to being angry to being happy. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely comes through very well. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. So what's next? So uh, you know, getting good reaction. Like, so what? You know, what's uh, what's in the future? Well, I mean, you know what? I am making music to to enjoy it. I'm trying to get back to making music because I love it, and and not making it. It's so difficult in this industry because you you want to you have to make money. You have to support yourself. This is my job. But when you were singing in the shower when you were nine years old, that wasn't what it was about. It was about getting that note right and, you know, figuring this out in your head and piecing these things together, you know, creatively um, and, and technically. And so that's what I'm trying to get back to is, is more just enjoying making music. Um, and yeah, maybe there's some TV ventures here and there. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm just enjoying learning. Yeah. Well, there Learning. it is, you know. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank, Thank you very much. This is the Aftermath, the best music discussion on the net. I'm Soren Baker. You can follow me at S-O-R-E-N-B-A-K-E-R -E -E on Twitter. I'm Billy Johnson Jr. You can follow me on Twitter at Y underscore Billy Johnson for the lady. Yeah. I'm Melody Thornton, and you can follow me at Twitter at M-E-L-O-D-Y-T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N. There it is, y'all. Thank you. Next time.